using simple and easily available materials like a disposable plastic bottle, a balloon, a piece of straw and a rubber band, in this activity we have made a functional bugle. This bugle is in fact capable of playing different notes. This activity demonstrates the way sound can be generated through vibration. In this case, the vibration of a membrane made from a stretched balloon. One interesting variation we can try with this activity is to stretch the balloon by different amounts and observe how the frequency of sound changes with the stretching. Suppose the base frequency on blowing in the straw without stretching the balloon is 320 hertz. We will find that the frequency increases to 450 hertz on stretching the balloon by a small extent and blowing into the straw. If we stretch the balloon to a greater extent and blow into the straw, we find that the frequency has increased to 570 hertz and so on. Obviously these numbers are arbitrary, you can try for yourself and see what you get. This happens because the frequency of vibration of the stretched balloon is higher and hence produces a shriller sound on being set into vibration. One can try different types or qualities of balloons to change the quality of sound produced and its frequency range. Every element of wind instruments, starting from the mouthpiece to the material of its body, is important to musicians and has an impact on the quality of sound produced. Similarly, we will find that thicker balloons produce a different sound than thinner skinned ones. Talking about variations of the bottle, a bottle with a narrower opening would likely produce a higher pitch sound than a bottle with a wider mouth. If the bottle were to be closed, it will not be possible to produce sound because there would be no place for blown air to exit. The energy conversion that happens on blowing into the straw is that wind energy gets converted to vibrational energy, which then becomes sound energy. Historically, the bugle was invented before recorded history, out of horns of animals. The name bugle itself comes from the word buculus, which was Latin for bullock. The horn has been used to announce arrival or signal some similar event. The post horn is one such example. It signaled the arrival or departure of a post rider. The coach horn was very similar to the post horn in that it signaled the arrival or departure of a horse-driven coach. The post horn or coach horn was coined to make it easier to carry without losing the tone quality. The post horn was so symbolic that the symbol of the German post office today is of a post horn. The bugle was also used as a sign of peace by a surrendering army. Much of the association of bugles has been with relation to the military. It indicates the daily routines of camp and in wartime the bugle was used as a signal to convey messages from officers to soldiers. The simple music instrument which we have made has a similarity with bagpipes. Just as in the bagpipes, a bag of air is created using which the production of sound happens. In the case of our instrument, this bag of air pushes against the membrane and causes it to vibrate with built up air pressure and this finally produces vibrations that then produce the sound. Some scientific terms, the frequency or the pitch is the rate per second of a vibration constituting a wave and is colloquially often called pitch. A valve is a device for controlling the passage of fluid or air through a pipe, duct, etc. and allowing flow in only one direction. Some theory prerequisites, uh, understanding of vibration and sound, concepts of conversion of energy from one form into another, and basic motor skills to conduct this simple activity. Our creation differs from the normal bugle in that the sound is produced by the vibration of a stretched membrane. A bugle, however, is a simple instrument without a valve. We blow air into the straw, keeping the level of the straw below the level of the bottle cap. This is done so that air can accumulate in a little bag before acting on vibrating the membrane. 
Also, by doing this, the membrane stretches on top of the bottle cap, forming an airtight cover. When the pressure in the little airbag exceeds what the bag can hold, the pressure transfers to the stretch membrane, causing it to vibrate. As a result of that, two things happen. One, sound is produced. And two, the membrane gives way intermittently during its vibration and air passes below the membrane, relieving the pressure of the airbag. As long as we keep blowing air into the bag, the sound is produced. Sound is a wave that is created by vibrating objects and propagates from one place to another through a medium. Sound is a mechanical wave because it transports a disturbance through particle to particle interaction by disturbing the first particle of the medium which then passes on the disturbance to the next particle and so on. Sound travels in the form of longitudinal wave though gases and liquids can move through solids in either the form of a longitudinal wave or a transverse wave. In case of a longitudinal wave, the direction of movement of the particles of the medium is the same as the direction of propagation of the wave. In case of a transverse wave, however, the movement of the particles of the medium, solid medium in case of sound waves, is perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave. Mechanical waves require a medium to propagate and cannot travel through a vacuum, in contrast to electromagnetic waves. Sound is a transfer of energy from the source to the surrounding medium, which may be gaseous, liquid or solid. The particles of the medium vibrate and transfer sound energy to the next particle of the medium. A so-called pressure wave is generated and the particles vibrate depending on the frequency of the source object. The energy is technically called sound when it enters our ears and generates nerve signals, causing the brain to recognize it as a meaningful sound signal. The more the energy with which the sound wave generation happens, the louder the sound will be. A very interesting experiment with this activity is to stretch the balloon and then blow into the straw. We find that the more we stretch the balloon, the higher the pitch of the sound becomes, on measuring frequency with a tuner. The reason for this is that the membrane is stretched more tightly on the cover of the bottle due to pulling the balloon and this reduces the wavelength of vibration increasing the frequency of sound produced from the membrane. A more tightly stretched membrane will be less free to move and will vibrate a shorter distance away from mean position so it will vibrate more times per second compared to a loose membrane when given equal stimulation. This would mean higher frequency. Frequency and wavelength happen to be inversely proportional and can be related by the formula V equals F lambda, where V is the speed of the wave, F is the frequency of the wave, and lambda is the wavelength of the wave. The bugle or the horn has been used in the military and camps where routine is marked by and announced to participants using sound. The bugle also has a place in music bands. An interesting application for the bugle is a variation of the instrument which mimics the sound of the bull elk calling to its mates. The bull elk bugle is used in hunting to bring elks closer to hunters. Wind instruments generally rely on vibrating columns of air or vibrating reeds to produce sound just like our bugle in the detectivity. The animal ear consists of an eardrum whose vibration makes it possible for us to receive sound, which is further processed by the brain. Speakers produce sound through vibrating membranes. Drums also rely on vibrating membranes which are stuck to produce sound. Study of membrane non-periodic vibrations are important in civil structures and even prosthesis like arteries and organs. Their study is also important for space applications like radio antennas and optical reflectors. Although the bugle is not that commonly used today, it has been important in the past, especially in the military. Today, cousins of this instrument, like the trumpet, are very much part of orchestras and bands. We understood the concepts behind production of sound by vibration of a membrane through this activity and explored variations on it. We were able to change the frequency of sound produced by this instrument too. 
Musical instruments use somewhat similar methods to alter frequency of sound production and move to different notes. We hope you had a lot of fun playing with your own handmade bugle. We'll see you later. Thank you.